learning, understanding, following my curiosity and researching questions that come out of absolutely anywhere is what I enjoy doing the most. Fleshing all of that out, exploring interesting ideas, but expressing ideas requires a writing tool. A video often starts with a bullet point and expands from there. I started with simple notes apps and Microsoft Word, moving to Notion for the majority of my higher education. But when I was given the freedom to research more, it felt like my curiosity was buffering all of the time. Waiting for something to load, trying to find the location of something, going through a manual process to bring ideas together. Or organizing databases. When Rome was the next app on the block, I couldn't see the point in the graph view and the links made no sense to me. The code looking interface, to be honest, scared me away. I was happier fiddling with my databases with relations and rollups in Notion. Then I tried Obsidian and I was immediately confused. <laughs> it was fast, easy to find things and did everything I wanted and needed, but I didn't want to switch. I was happy with Notion until I wasn't. Both apps are free, Obsidian does require payment or a cloud-based workaround for syncing across devices, but you don't have control of your data with Notion. And the cloud-based app does mean the speed is reduced, making Obsidian faster, considerably faster when the services of Notion are struggling or just down. Which brings me to a sense of reliability. As much as Microsoft Word is a pain to work in, I know my work is safe if I remember to push Control S, like all the time. With Notion, it saves automatically, but I had multiple experiences where things disappear, move and go all over the place sometimes, but out of nowhere. There was never an issue, they came back, but when there was a delay or a funny moment, it did stop my workflow. Obsidian has the same automatic saving without the glitches. Once I had experienced the speed, fluency and ease of navigating in Obsidian, there was no going back. At the beginning, the difference was small and not noticeable. But now it's like driving behind someone, shouting at them to speed up, even though they are doing 38 in a 40. Like, the difference objectively is really small, but subjectively so different. Now, the look of Notion is something people, myself included, love to bring up. It is pretty, aesthetic, minimalistic, but I wanted brighter colors and to change some of the things, just slightly, move things around a bit. You can do bits in Notion, but Obsidian makes it far easier. Community themes are one option, but adding community plugins with a theme basically means you can change almost every aesthetic part of the tool. Yes, that can be overwhelming for some, but sometimes it is the small changes that make the biggest difference. I personally only change the colors from the main theme increase the size of the page preview windows so I can see more and add a background highlight to the block I'm working in so I can keep track of where the cursor is. My theme download is in the free starter pack linked in description. But this brings me to the interface. Notion, like most notes apps, give you a page to work on with some giving a sidebar a recent update to Notion. But Obsidian, I think was the first or at least first to my knowledge notes app that allows for multiple pages, vertical, horizontal, pop-out windows for working in, and they are working on adding tabs as well. So literally every sort of workspace you may want is available or will be soon. The page preview being another great feature to help with viewing information, which Notion seems to have adopted, not quite as nicely in my opinion, which I would say is similar to the backlinks and linking in general. Yes, Obsidian has faster linking and link searching, but I've already spoken about the speed differences. Obsidian also allows you to link a heading or section of a note, or just a block. Notion has synced blocks, but it isn't the same, which I will admit I didn't see the point at first. You can look through all my notes, link in the description, but the script for a recent video uses block references to a note. And instead of having to find a block each time, remembering where those sections are, or changing the wording for the script, I can just link to the block and open it up when I think I need to reference it. This also keeps the original block intact for future reference. Again, I can see this at the same time because of the multiple pages I can have open or use page preview inside of Obsidian. To my knowledge, you can't search for sync blocks or just blocks in general in Notion. 
I imagine that will be a feature soon if it isn't already, that I can search for concepts in the script. I don't need to go looking anywhere else. The general linking between pages is also much easier to look through. Firstly, because the list is where I want it to be. Not at the bottom, not at the top, but where I want to put it. It is also searchable and allows me to expand for specific context, which is very useful if I reference the same page more than once. And I can change the name of the backlink to whatever I want in the page, or use an alias for the page. So it makes search, linking, and context shifting way easier. The unlinked references are a nice feature in Obsidian, but like the global graph view, I don't use it. However, I do use the local graph view because it tells me what papers I have done a review video on, tells me what linked ideas still need to be distilled, and makes linking sources to concepts far easier on a day-to-day -day basis. Aesthetically to me, it is also nicer than a sorted list of relations in a database. I was never a big tag fan in Notion, Evernote, or any app I used before Obsidian. Probably because I had little experience using tags, but what got me using them was a simple status tag. I can search for them easily, what page or block they are located in, and even put the saved search in my home workspace, meaning I am a couple of key presses away from my to-do list tag search, or any advanced search I frequently use. A caveat here, I do my task management in Morgan, not Obsidian, which I explain in more detail in my course, link in description, which moves me nicely onto hotkeys. I learned the hotkeys in Notions quickly, but I still spent most of my time moving the mouse around the screen, pushing on links, changing tabs, closing things down, and most importantly, performing actions. There are shortcuts in Notion, but in Obsidian, I can make them what I want, and literally every action has a hotkey. Open up my home workspace, hotkey. Daily note, hotkey. Search an open page, hotkey. Move, delete, edit, blocks, hotkey. Import PDF notes from Zotero, hotkey. The only times I use my mouse is to use the outline plugin, which will be hotkeyable soon. Scrolling up and down pages sometimes, spelling corrections, and middle clicking to open up a page. As mentioned in a previous video, Zotero is my go-to capture tool for everything, from videos, podcasts, blogs, and academic papers. And in Obsidian, I can get all of those highlights, links back to the highlights, and metadata information all at the push of a hotkey. Notion doesn't have a PDF reader, so clipping is not that useful for me, and exporting the note into Notion from Zotero just adds friction I don't want. A copy and paste is one thing, but when I want things formatted specifically, I want the customization. The use of Pandoc for automatic citation styles is another bonus of using Obsidian, but that is only useful for those writing academic manuscripts. Collaboration is a good counterpoint, but for notes, collaborative sync vaults work wonders. I do a podcast about PKM science with John, and we collaborate in an Obsidian vault. We both add ideas, and it works great. The only limitation is live editing in the same page. But as a lone researcher, that doesn't affect me, and it hasn't impacted John and I at all in the podcast. So far. Now, when discussing the development team, firstly, Notion is a much larger tool with way more developers and team in general. I don't know what the number is at right now, but it is far more than the Obsidian Trio. Yes, just three developers. They talk in the community, help with bugs, errors, and issues, take in all the ideas from the community to move things forwards and push out updates so fast. My video about Obsidian Beginners was version 0.1212. Yes, technically still a beta app. And we are now at 0.15.9. Still technically a beta app. That is 79 updates compared to Notion's 10. Yes, the sizes are a little different, with Notion not announcing all updates in their What's New tab, but still, that is impressive, especially with some of the massive updates that have been released in Obsidian recently. A personal example here, there was some bugs in Notion that the community were talking about a, a while back, and Notion fixed it in the next update, which was about four to five weeks later. Every time I share a bug with the Obsidian developers, they either already have a patch because someone who's already mentioned it, or they work out the patch and it's released that week. But 
I spent a while figuring out a workflow for me and finding lots of little nuanced things from forum discussions, general Google searching and YouTube video watching, which is why I have put all of my findings in my academics course. It isn't a traditional course, it is my go-to help documentation for all the apps I use, because there are things I forget, or things I change, then want to go back to, and sometimes I need me to tell me <laughs> what I do. It is updated when tools are updated, or my workflow is updated, so if you want to know exactly how I work, and how the updates affect or don't affect my workflow, there is a link in the description below, but I don't think this video would be fair if I didn't point out some things I don't like about Obsidian. Currently, if you move a block from one page to another, it breaks the ID and therefore the link. I rarely need to do this and could easily embed the block, but that is something that is irritating, especially for those that have a workflow around moving blocks between pages, like Roman Loxig users. Sticking with blocks, the dragging and dropping of blocks is a little clunky as you need to highlight the text before moving the blocks. Having a block identifier would make this much easier. There is a feature request for this and a community plugin that sort of does this, but only works with bullet points at the moment. Then, in order to start writing, Understanding Markdown is pretty important, but that is the same for most of the tool for thought note apps out right now, including Notion. As it is a flexible tool, it can be overwhelming at the start if you want to use all the features. But the way I see Obsidian is the same as Microsoft Word. I'm sure you don't know what all the buttons do in Microsoft Word, unless you have used them at some point. I treat Obsidian the same. I use the buttons I actually need to use. This one is like a feature request, but the inability to rename save searches is also irritating, again with a feature request waiting to be upvoted. I don't have any other issues, but more feature-like requests, which are easily made and discussed with their roadmap publicly accessible. Another pixie point for the Obsidian team, but liking and commenting on the feature requests boost them, so I have left the links to the related requests in the description, but I also recognise everyone works differently with various constraints and affordances in the environment they work in. So Notion may suit you, Roam may suit you, Logseek, Remnote, Insert, like every other note taking app out there. But for me, Obsidian does it all. If you have any questions, I will see you in the comment section below.